addressing your comments, criticisms, compliments, questions. What energy you bring here, I will return to you with the maintenance of rule one, rule equal, the balance of the honor and the grace, and the position of peace and neutrality. Keep in mind, no one is twisting your arm to be here, so keep that in mind. If you are going to make claims or if you are choosing to not read the terms and conditions of the comments field, well, then you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Now, I don't ever take anything personally here. I recommend that you do the same. What I'm saying in this comments video is a critique based upon using the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. Keep that in mind. Everything I say is pretty much through that lens. So with that in mind, let's get to it. We have some really fun comments to get to here in this particular edition, which I do think is for the clarity. And closure of the viewers' comments, 67. I've done 67 of these things. Isn't that crazy? At least it's crazy to me. I will give you a little warning, though. At the end, we're going to be talking about God. All right. Now, I know every time I mention that concept on this channel, and I mention it in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and about knowing what a fact is, and being able, of cer able to certify said fact to another contract part using a continuance of the evidence. I've used God in this context. And every time I do it, there's always a couple, you know, true believers that come out of the woodwork and just leave copious amounts of comments trying to explain to me how they can prove that God exists as a fact. And they say they'll send me emails with really long explications and, uh, you know, articulating their position on the, on the matter. Here's the thing. What's the volition behind that? Why is it important for them that I agree with them? All right? Because there's a couple things going on there in that context. I've said that you have to know what a fact is, and everything that you participate with a fact as a fact, you would have a list of, of criteria that a fact would fill meaning you can check all the boxes for what a fact is to you. And you have to apply that across the board to every single concept that you're articulating in a correct sentence structure contract. If your fact does not tick all the boxes, it's not a fact. Okay? It's that simple. And I've never seen any scenario where the actual historical religious common idea of what a god is is able to be certified as a fact but for some reason it's important for some of you out there it's very important to you that i agree with your ideas of this which i mean i don't care if people agree with me or not and i maybe i don't care is too strong a term it doesn't affect me one way or the other if you agree with what I'm saying or not because this is my platform. This is a correct sentence structure platform. If you don't want to participate with the facts, if you don't want to know what a fact is and you don't want to know how to articulate those facts using a mathematical interface on grammar, well, then you don't have to be here. You certainly don't have to be here preaching about your belief in a God. <laughs> so, okay, that's sort of like a preface of what's to come later on at the end so stick around if you're interested in that if you're a delicate flower and easily offended and triggered by those types of things then you're probably going to want to shut it off towards the end so first comment comes from maggie mccall and they say thank you 
you put things in a simple neutral way, another way of looking at things, i.e. human, rather than color of man, i.e. not man, but color of the man, we need to stop and think before jumping onto a meaning and break the word down. Well, Maggie, these are rule one, rule equal judge mechanics, as we could, we could call them judge mechanics. You have to get the whole story. You have to get all the knowledge you can. I find that what a lot of people do, especially in this day and age, especially this most, you know, the most recent generations, they'll look for meanings of things, right? And when they find a meaning that vibes with them, that's congruent with the way they think, their particular bias, they'll stop there and just agree with it and then all of a sudden participate with that particular piece of data as a fact rather than getting the whole story, rather than getting all the points that maybe don't agree with their personal bias. They don't get the whole story. They just get what is comfortable for them, and then that's what they go with. And I've gone into that in many, many videos about what happens when <laughs> you take an opinion and then project the, the condition of state of a fact onto that opinion. All kinds of negative stuff happens when you do that. And that happens most commonly in religion. And then we encounter a thing called cognitive dissonance. Or, you know, we can say cognitive conjecture. Next comment comes from Dennis Thompson. And he says, hello, Jason, please keep up the good work. I'll do my best, Dennis. Any format is fine by me, as so far you always bring some wisdom and open my mind up in ways one day we will talk about. Hmm. One day we will talk about it, eh, Dennis? What's going to happen first? Dennis and I talking or Jesus coming back? Let's find out. As a little joke, are you trying to make one of them pulled over videos LOL? But seriously, happy trails. Dennis Michael Colon Space Thompson. Well, that, that's pretty funny because he's talking about the uh, for the checks and balances videos that I've started doing where I'm in my car or in my vehicle or vessel or whatever you want to call it. And I'm driving and I'm talking to the camera. Wouldn't that be interesting if I did get pulled over in such a scenario and would be able to get that on film? That, that would be premium content right there. Members only probably. No, I'm just kidding. But I have not been pulled over in, I can't remember. Let's see. Maybe 2014, 13, 14. That's the last time I've been pulled over. I'm a very safe driver. As a matter of fact, I have never caused an accident, ever. I've been rear-ended before, three or four times, but I have never been the cause of an accident, never been in an accident. Uh, that's one of the things that uh, I have a skill. I feel I have a skill for correct sentence structure and driving. That's why I can never, ever have like a... a a Hellcat or a Scat Pack or anything like that because I'd probably be in a lot of trouble within a week or two of having such a vehicle. Next comment comes from Quadruple A. Thank you for your membership. And they say, very, very good one. Thanks, Jason. Would it be correct to underline the abbreviation with an underlined period? but add a second period which is not underlined to function as a full stop. Now, here's the thing. Okay. Bear with me. I have been putting videos out since February of 2018. I would not put out a video giving closure to mechanics of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar if I didn't fully participate with what was being conveyed in the video. 
So this individual who does not have closure on the grammar, this individual who leaves very thoughtful and grammar-related questions on this channel on a consistent basis, which thank you very much for that, Quadruple A, I do appreciate it. This individual who, in asking these thought-provoking questions, I usually try to give a little bit of closure, a little bit of uh, advice to study further with these videos, and then also try and steer them towards doing a workshop if they're serious about learning the grammar. Because someone who asks this many questions, if they're that interested in it, then the next logical step would be to commit to doing workshops rather than trying to get closure through a comments field. Because the thing is, and I've said this over and over again, quadruple A, a comments field on YouTube is not an efficient place to share closures. Simple closures, yes. Okay? But a lot of the things that you ask require longer explication, hence the 900 or so videos on this YouTube channel that are available for you to study. So while I can give you direction to watch a video for closure or a playlist more likely for closure, just taking the now space to type out long, tedious answers in a comments field is not something I'm, I'm happy, you know, to invest in when there are other venues available like for example you investing your own now space in studying the grammar on this channel or you investing in workshops and i know you're going to say i'm not ready to invest in workshops and blah 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 that's what you've been saying for months so when you're serious about it you will do it nothing will stop you from learning it but as it is i'm doing the best i can you're doing the best you can so take this as you will. I would not put something in a video if I was not 100% sure of it. So what you're doing here is asking me if what I put in the video is correct. I've already answered the question that you're, you're asking here, which it's not really a question because there's no question mark there. But you're saying, would it be correct to underline the abbreviation with an underlined period, but add a second period which is not underlined to function as a full stop? You would have a question mark after the word stop there if that were an actual question. Perhaps English is not your first language. But again, to address this for a third time, I would not put something in a video if I was not 100% confident and sure of what I was saying. And I give closure to that. So the answer to that is no, it's not correct. And if you would gain closure on the grammar, you would be able to answer your own question. The abbreviation would not be correct if the last period is left out of the abbreviation and thus the last letter in the abbreviation is therefore nothing more than a standalone vowel. That is not correct. Watch the video again. The period, the full stop at the end of the abbreviation functions as a full stop to the abbreviation to the letter that it follows, and if the period is not underlined, it also serves as a full stop to the sentence. Thus, the period functions as a full stop. The underline functions as a mechanic that dictates what type of full stop it's going to be with regards to the abbreviation, which again is explained in the video. The abbreviation is therefore not correct. Again, quadruple A, you are not correct because you don't know the grammar. If you think I'm doing something wrong, then first you must provide a position yourself of grammar knowledge. Show me what I'm doing wrong. Show me how to do it correctly and why what you're saying is correct. Backed up with the continuance of the evidence of your knowledge level. You're more than welcome to make a video and provide a continuance of the evidence, much as I've done on this channel. And that way you can challenge me on this geometric level playing field. But first, you must step up onto the geometric level playing field because I don't even know who you are. You don't even use your correct name or anything like that. So it's very hard to take something, someone like this seriously, folks. Someone who doesn't use their correct name. Someone who consistently leaves very thoughtful comments 
very thoughtful, provoking, and intelligent comments on the channel consistently over a long period of time, but yet they won't do a workshop. Even though I tell them this is not the correct venue for efficient closure, they continue. And then I tell them I will give you a 10 to 15 minute consultation where you can ask me this question about the abbreviation and I will explain it to you face to face and they still don't want it. So I've offered now three venues for closure. And yet this individual is telling me I'm not correct. <laughs> oh, it's like an abbreviation with a single vowel at the end of it with no space and then period. My point being the last letter in any abbreviation also needs a period in order for it not to let anything else be a part. Yes, it, are, it has a period. There is a period there and I explain it in that video. But when written at the end of a sentence, it needs that second not underlying period to make sense come to a full stop. Now he puts a question mark there. See, this is very convoluted to me. It's, I wish the individual would summarize what they're saying into a very brief, clear sentence. The last period of the abbreviation is a part of the abbreviation. The whole fact stands the last period. If you want the sentence to come to a full stop, you would add a second period. You would not underline. I would like your view on this. Quadruple A, I have given you my view on this in the frickin' video that you're commenting on. And when I say frickin', it doesn't mean I'm getting frustrated or impatient or anything like that. I'm trying to convey to you that the closures are in the videos. And the questions you're asking, you're basically changing me and saying that I'm not correct without saying it. Low key, as the kids say these days. So let's see how I gave Cooley on it here. I said, please sum your question up in one brief, clear sentence. Other than that, perhaps watch the video a few more times or look at other videos regarding punctuation. Thank you. Yes. I mean, because to me, this is a bunch of, I mean, it's very hard to understand for me, especially this is what I'm talking about in a comments field. This individual is asking me to expend now space in reading this comment when they could do the studying themselves or they could do workshops and, and get closure in a very high, efficient level. They say, I had missed the reaction of blah, blah, blah below here, asking the same thing about the G and abbreviation having no period, the last period being taken away from the abbreviation modified into functioning as a full stop to the sentence. Very interesting. So they're saying it's very interesting. I don't know why they spell very with two R's. That's interesting. They did it. <laughs> That's interesting. They did it up here too. I wonder why they do that. Just curiosity. But it sounds like they're not uh, they're not fully on board with what I'm offering here. So then they say, uh, oh, then I, okay, they said from the abbreviation modified into functioning is a full stop. There is no modification in correct sentence structure. I give full closure to the function of the period and all of the symbols mechanics, no modification, which I don't know if that's a, a mistake or, or a misrepresentation there, but modified into functioning as a full stop is not a modification. It's a full stop, full stop, full stop, full stop. That's the function of the period. The uh, condition of state or domain of that full stop is also contingent upon whether there's an underlined, whether it's underlined or not, which is the point of this video that he's commenting on. So again, you know, I hope that you don't take what I said in a negative way. You, in particular, quadruple A. Again, I offer, even though you, you haven't taken me up on it, Contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have in-depth questions like this, feel free to contact me, and I will set up a 10 to 15-minute video consultation, with which costs you nothing except your now space, so we can look at each other face-to-face, eye-to-eye, and I will give you this closure. And take my word for it, I implore you that as a tutor of six years, teaching this to hundreds of people, the closure comes much more efficiently 
when you and I are looking at each other and you're listening to me and watching me and I'm giving examples and I'm looking at you, watching you, whether you're cognizing it or not, it's a medium that that is really unparalleled other than being in person. And a comments field just turns into mitigation, just and ain't nobody got time for that. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I do appreciate your membership, and I do appreciate these comments, and I hope you appreciate my kuleana. Now we're going to get to the meat of the matter. Let me get a drink of coffee. So this individual, Pi314, blah, 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 also known as Kenneth Wayne Counton, which, by the way, if you look at that name, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter because it's in brackets, but the spacing after the uh, full colon is incorrect. So this individual says, for the claimant's knowledge of the fact. So we're talking about one fact here. I usually put facts for the claimant's knowledge of the facts because there's more than one fact being conveyed. Is, with the cognition claim, so it's a claim of cognition, of the creator. So cognition claim is possessing the fact. Which fact it is, I don't know. But what is the cognition claim concerned with? Concerned with the creator. Okay. Creator of what exactly? We don't know. That has not been credentialed. What is possessing this mysterious creator? Port sensations. So he's talking about his port of sensation. And what is that concerned with? Creation. Okay. And what's possessing the creation? The cogitation. So cogitation is thinking. So thinking is possessing the creation. And what is the authority of the cogitation? The witness and claimant, Kenneth Wayne. So going backwards, for the witness and claimant, Kenneth Wayne, what's he concerned with? He's concerned with the cogitation. He's concerned with thinking is with the creation. So the creation is possessing the thinking Concerned with the port sensations possessed by the creator, I know what Kenneth is talking about because he's commenting on, um, it's either a video or a post that has to do with God. And he's using the word creator for that. So this is what he's referencing. And then they say, for the claimant's knowledge of the fact... Again, singular fact, so they're claiming one fact, even though there's multiple facts here, missing a hyphen between claimants and knowledge, which throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, is with the cognition claim of the creator with the creator's plan of the timeline. Time is no contract, because it doesn't exist. At least in my domain of correct sentence structure, with the creation steps of the consciousness, with the picture of the guidance, with the cogitation by the witness and claimant, for the witness and claimant of the cogitation is with the guidance of the picture. So Kenneth, Kenneth's thinking is guiding the picture possessed by the consciousness concerned with the creation steps with the timeline of the creator's plan. So what is he saying here? He's guiding the picture of the creator's plan. That's interesting. Please Google Mayan calendar of consciousness for graphical depiction and video explanation. So then I say... For this claim, it's knowledge of the facts is with the claim of the seek, with the video and photographic confirmation of the Kenneth Wayne, with the Kenneth Wayne's share of the data with the possible audit by the seeker and claimant. So I'm asking for photographic confirmation for evidence of 
this creator that they're claiming as a fact. I know their volition is to claim the creator as a fact. And so I'm asking for hard evidence of this. And then I say, so you're using, you are using a fiction source of fiction history for your proof of a creator, meaning Mayan calendar of consciousness. In your correct sentence structure, you state as a fact that you are a witness to a creator. Correct? I'm asking you for first-hand proof of that. You know, pics, videos, etc. So I'm asking for a continuance of the evidence for his first-hand knowledge of a creator. Now, sending me to Google or to a fiction Mayan calendar is not evidence. At least, not in this context that I'm asking for. Like, if I, if, if I say to you, this is a cup, I can prove it's a cup to you using first-hand knowledge. Hand it to you. You can touch it. There's liquid in it. We can prove this. All right? So then they say, I became aware of this in 2004. I witnessed eight steps of the eighth level come in and the 13 steps of the ninth and final level. I have witnessed the effects of these steps. I don't expect you to accept without a plethora of facts. If you can find holes in it, great. I have it in 20 years of trying to. Uh, and then they say, pottery requires a potter. I may never meet the potter, but logic can be used here to validate the potter. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a logical fallacy. It's false analogy. Because pottery requires a potter, but you can also take a picture of the potter doing the pottery, making the pottery or, may, or creating a sculpture. There's no assumption necessary. Bring your first-hand proof and certification, please, and cease asking me to participate with fiction sources and assumptions. If you possess closure on correct sentence structure and what a fact is, you would be better cognize my stance regarding the fiction position you are supporting. So this individual obviously doesn't have closure on the grammar. And I will share with you that in the past, this individual has recently, like within the past few months, contacted me wanting to do a workshop. But then they never follow through. Or I offer a consultation and they never follow through. So that tells me there's a little bit of haphazardness to this individual's navigations. But they certainly make it a point to say something when I reference God, which is very interesting. When I talk about learning correct sentence structure, they don't say anything. When I talk about, would you, you know, like closure on the grammar? Would you like me to schedule a consultation? Silence. <laughs> but when it comes to this, now they want to talk. Now they want to mitigate. So it shows me where their mindset is as far as correct sentence structure versus fiction concepts. So then they say, at what point do you conclude wind is a fact? And I'm glad they said this because Kenneth and I can stand outside and then we feel a sensation on our faces. That must be wind, Kenneth. Can you feel it? Let's look it up in a dictionary. Okay. It's cognized in a fiction dictionary. Wind is a thing that has been witnessed and felt by other people. You can physically feel it. You can physically see its effects in the trees. Whatever that is that's doing that, that's causing those sensations, we'll call it wind. Where does it come from? Well, actually, I mean, it's air, right? So if I, like, like as a child, as a teenager, we would play this joke with people where you put one hand next to someone's face and then you go like this and slap your hand real quick and you're pretending to slap the other person across the face and you feel it. You feel the wind, right? Certification, physical certification of what wind is. There is no way to do that for a God or a creator as far as creator of 
of everything that we see in that context. There's no way to certify that the way you would with wind. Or even not, then someone else will say, well, how to certify love? It's like, what are you talking about? Are you good, bro? Love is a sensation that one feels, a warm sensation. You can use all these words to describe it. But any normal individual can experience this towards their children, parents, spouse, siblings, other human beings, other species. There's a thing called love that you experience. Some would say it's an emotion, a sensation. We can certify that as tangible contract, right? Like you know what I mean. God is not the same thing. It can't be certified the same way. Because when you say, well, the evidence of God is all around you, well, that's an assumption. When someone sac makes a sacrifice for someone else, for, for an example, um, maybe someone is, is running to attack an old lady with a baseball bat and I jump in front of them and get hit with a baseball bat and get beat up because I'm trying to protect, uh, let's say the, the, the old lady is my grandmother. It's out of love. I did that out of love. That's evidence. You can't do the same thing with God. Do you see what I'm saying? God is based on an assumption. Hence, that is why religions require faith. You have to believe without seeing. You have to believe without proof. Tell me I'm wrong. It's based on assumption presumption. Here we have all ports of sensation observing the creation, and now I have a precise timeline of the execution that I have validated perhaps a hundred ways. You've a timeline of the execution? The execution of what? Do you know what execution means? I'm seeing pictures of people going to a chopping block with a dude with a hood on and an axe <laughs> executing. That's an interesting choice of words. It's easy to dismiss. I was atheist, agnostic, and... Okay. The books have many ciphers in them and, of course, can't be taken literally. The books are adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. First of all, if you knew how to syntax, you, I think you would cognize this. Rest on the seventh day. Each level completes on the beginning of the seventh step. 144,000, the numbers of days in each step of the sixth level. But the paleontological and written records, albeit some have been obscured, like the sun orbits the earth, line up as well. See, this, this has no like meaning or value to someone like me who participates with the facts in a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, context. This individual is talking about a fiction babble text. And it's my position, and I've made this clear, that any type of text like this is an elaborate psychological operation control system. And when someone like this comes to me you know, preaching this type of thing, trying to convince me of these things. The only thing it convinces me of is the success of this PSYOP control system. Because anyone, I feel, anyone who has closure on correct sentence structure, which this individual doesn't, is a critical thinker who does not participate with assumption presumption, which... This person is obviously a critical thinker, but they're also obviously participating with assumption presumption because you're participating with something you cannot prove. Um, then that tells me, it gives me a clue as to why this individual most likely finds correct sentence structure a challenge and why they won't address that deficit in knowledge. 
So it makes me wonder, you know, why, you know, on a deeper level, why is someone like Kenneth here? Why is he continuing to comment when what he's saying has nothing to do with grammar and everything to do with his belief system, his own personal belief system, which he is entitled to, just as you are, just as I am. But why bring it here? This is a place of facts. And one other thing I'd like to address, friends and neighbors, is his use of the word creator. Now, I'm going to give you my position on that. When I look around, I see things that have been created by a creator. Like this mouse was created, right? This cup was created. It stands to reason, logical inference, that everything has a creator and has been created. However, I cannot prove all of that. I don't have a way to prove that. So therefore, I do not participate with, how can I say this, an all-powerful creator as a fact, because I have no way to certify that. I may lean towards that as a probability. That, yeah, that's probably the way it is, but I don't have any proof of it. No tangible proof. So I'm not just going to jump to believing in something just because it logically makes sense circumstantially. <laughs> oh man, I hope I, I hope this is getting across to you folks out there, and especially to Kenneth, because I can see it's very important for him for some reason for me to at least acknowledge what he's talking about. Now I don't know what he's talking about as far as the the steps. The, the numbers he's talking about, the eight steps or the 12 steps. I don't know what type of steps he's talking about, but it doesn't really matter to me because here on this channel, we're concerned with the facts. And I would ask Kenneth, you know, even though he do doesn't seem to want to learn the grammar or get closure on the grammar, I would suggest to him to make a list of what constitutes a fact for him. What's the checklist for his facts? Put a cup on there. Does it check all the boxes? Put wind on there. Does it check all the boxes? Put light on there. Does it check all the boxes? Put space on there. Does it check all the boxes? Put creator on there. Now, creator doesn't have to be the all-powerful creator. I am a creator. I create things. When I put the word creator in a document, it doesn't, I mean, that word, one word, one meaning, one and one is one, spreads across all my contracts. Matter of fact, I will share that finite meme with you right now. So here is my finite meme for creator. For the creator of this finite meme is with the claim of an author or of a maker with the performance by the creation. So the creator is the cause. And what's the creator concerned with? The finite being. So I'm giving closure. I'm giving a finite meaning to the word creator. Singular verb is possessive with the claim. The claim is possessing the finite mean, the meaning. It's a claim of meaning. What's it concerned with? An author or a of a maker so it's a maker or author and what's possessing the author or maker performance and what is the authority of the performance the creation backwards for the creation of the performance is with a maker or with an author of the claim with the finite mean by the creator so now that begs the question well, what is creation well, i'm glad you asked for the creation of this finite mean is with this claim of this skill, with this construction, and with this maintenance of any matter, with the certification by the author. For the author of the certification is with any matter of this maintenance and of this construction, with this skill of this claim, with this finite mean by the creation. Basically, folks, 
It's all about a continuance of the evidence and certifying the construction or maintenance of any matter. So if I'm a creator and I have a creation such as a document like this, I can certify that I created it. I can provide proof that I had the skill to create it. I can create another one. I can create a correct sentence structure on the spot. I can syntax on the spot. This, these are certifications of skill and knowledge. Okay? So therefore, if someone is going to claim that there's an ultimate creator of everything, then that creator, well, that claimant would have to provide evidence of skill, performance, and construction by this ultimate creator whether it's through video pictures however you want to do it but not through fiction babble rhetoric or you can get the creator itself to do it so kenneth if you have a phone number for this creator or an email address or a location of some sort Matter of fact, why don't you have your creator email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I can set up a 10 to 15 minute video consult for this creator and we can have a talk. Other than that, it's, it's assumption presumption. I know I'm being a little silly here, <laughs> but to me it is a silly topic and I hope, I hope that this lays to rest. I'm probably, you know, it's misplaced hope, probably. Because I'm sure it's not going to, I mean, because Kenneth has, it's, he appears to have very, very strong beliefs in this. He's convinced of whatever this is for himself, which is cool. He can participate with this creator stuff and this level stuff as a fact if he wants to for himself. But what he can't really do is share that or prove that to someone else. Especially not someone like me. Especially when he doesn't have closure on grammar, which is the most important thing as far as this channel goes. All this stuff about God and creation and things like that, that's side stuff. Periphery stuff. So I'm not going to spend any more now space talking about it as far as the comments field, as far as this guy leaving comments and things like that, this, this is the end of, of me talking about it. This is my position. And I don't see any way that this guy can prove anything unless he does have his creator contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Hope you found this entertaining, folks, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, I offer several choices. The first one, and the easiest one, is to study the almost 900 free public videos on this YouTube channel that you're watching right now. The second option, if you want to see new content, is to click the Join button on my main YouTube page or under any video that you're watching. Click the Join button and you will see two tiers of membership. If you choose the second tier, the Loyalist Contributor tier, and you join that for a monthly support donation, you'll get new content, fresh content, exclusive content not available to the public every month. But keep in mind, there's already almost 900 videos here free to the public to study. And the third option is to contact me at the email address at the bottom of your screen, and this is for the serious students only, and apply for a correct grammar workshop. But please include your correct name when contacting me, and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation, and you and I will have a conversation. You can ask me whatever you want. I'll answer your questions. I'll do the same with you. I'll ask you questions, and we'll see if indeed you are really serious or not. Thank you.